process so it is some kind of background what is that it will, you, you will be doing like now now we see lot of movies what is the role of a director so that's what you think about it the director will have all the plan which goes on into his mind and put them into action that is what exactly the research proposal is and sometimes you will be confused between proposal and protocol and they are almost the same the protocol will have more or procedural and contain the set of instructions procedures to be implemented throughout the study so what are the guidelines for writing for going at the research uh, protocols guidelines for pro uh, writing pro research protocols may differ from one university to the another university and within the departments and writing a research protocol take a great deal of time since it requires thoughtful consideration so most of the time we think that working in the lab itself is the research it is not that it is in fact doing your research and writing your research protocols research proposals itself will take you about the 50% of your research work and a systemic systemic step by step approach necessary in planning the detailed study without plan there can be no experiments you now for example you need a uh streptojosin to induce your diabetes for the rats for animal model and if you don't have streptojosin you cannot do anything so pro to procure that chemicals and glassware and what all you require you need to have the research protocol and one needs to write a draft discuss with the guide incorporate any changes suggestions rewrite it until the researcher and the mentor agrees on the subject content now the interaction between the guide and the student is almost to be most of the time you need to spend with the time with the with the guide and so that they make the good protocols for doing the experiments now how do i develop a protocol the first and foremost thing is you need to select a research topic now if you ask many of the contemporary students now they ask that you know one my friend has done uh, analytical method development for some drug i will do it for x drug that is not the case you need to understand whether your research topic can give you several questions can generate a new knowledge provide a new ways of thinking or does it makes an additional research now i i can just give you an example today's uh, problem is that hydroxychloroquinone is used as a classical anti malarial drug now all of a sudden it is we started using it for as anti covid drug there are several examples like that dexamethone is, is one of the steroid which started looking at that so you just see see that how what is a new ways of thinking so that is what exactly you may, that may not be your pro problem you decided two years back but now the problem is different so what is the connectivity for the new knowledge production is more important and you try to select those topics where you can produce the new technology or new knowledge so for which you need to perform a literature and this literature will become a backbone for material for what already been done and what is going on so that you will not be able to duplicate the research work and many of our friends who are anger friends will do some work and when they try to publish they will get a letter stating that this work has already been done so what it happens is it goes one year of whole academic year work will goes futile so in order to avoid that you please try to do the background material and background material is like like the music directors in cinema and it will and this background will uh, material will provide you the gaps in published literature and establish a connectivity link between the identifying data collection tool and instrumentation so you need to after you performing the literature you will be able to get the gaps which are not answered in the literature which you will be able to answer with the help of your data collection tools and instrumentation and experimentation and so on now the draft of the research protocols how does it looks like you the draft will be after draft will be finalized between you and your guide and always don't write title and introduction first that is the last thing which you have to do the title and introduction first thing is the first question you need to understand is what is the area of research in which you are wish to work and a student who is working in palamur university want to work on the 
how a drug will be metabolized in the space will it be possible in that that is what the questions which you have to understand and what it is really feasible and what you can contribute by using the existing facilities you try to identify the area then with the review of the literature find out the existing knowledge in the area work not just by googling it you need to thorough research in pubmed and all the databases then read them and discuss with your uh, guide and if your guide is not been able to successfully guide you you can also take another co guide or another guide or advisory committee so that you will be able to do much justification for the uh, research problem and having read the literature thoroughly what you get is what are the gaps found in your area so how you these gaps are going to be fulfilled and those gaps will become your objectives and outcomes then why the expected outcomes are potentially important in the advanced uh, advancing the field so this is what you will be putting a two lines of what is it comes and how it will be useful for the next uh, uh people next generation or next people who are going to come work on this particular area then afterwards you give a title and introduction now i'll also explain you how to give an introduction but the title is more important and you know most of the thesis which i have come across the title will be something inside will be something else so please try to avoid that you give suitably how you give the namings for your kids that's what exactly you should understand and give the titles now the final research protocol will look like this the problem statement which is nothing but a title in the introduction you write objectives hypothesis how hypothesis you are going to test what is the background and significance then you will go for the literature review methodology study design work schedule and bibliography so this is how a final research protocol will look like now research topic and question choosing the thesis topic is it should be a topic which on which adequate literature is available the first more foremost thing is that you know the topic which you have selected is you should be able to get all the literature for example you you talk about the drug metabolism in the space you may not be able to get in indian context or a vaccine for a future disease so all these you need to answer them and then try to select the topic and you should be feasible to pursue and can be completed timely fashion which means you know if you are trying to do a, a masters project or you are trying to do a phd project that is what cl uh, clearly you should be able to understand how much time if it is 9 months or 1 year time can it can it be completed in 1 year that is what you have to understand and the topic which you have selected should not be broad complicated too big to handle Uh, the specific time the topic should be inquisitive and should include major variables so this topic should have some interest some anxiety should be developed for the researcher what i am going to benefit or what is that it is going to happen and it should contribute to the field being investigated so the area which you take you should be able to become a a unique uh, researcher who is contributing the unique uh, uh, theory so after selecting a topic the topic is best formulated into questions so if this question should be thought provoking questions the each topic should have a focus the question should have a framework the question into more precise objectives the objectives are then formulated into the hypothesis now what are the objectives objectives are broken down into one or more objectives in the in the study which may be sometimes aim goal purpose all these are synonyms it will specify what scientific questions of the study is designed to answer the simply what are the questions which is going to answer will be your objectives now the specific aims is to describe concisely realistically what is proposed research is intended to accomplish the specific aim should cover broad long term goals hypothesis to be tested the specific aim section should begin with a narrative describing of the long term goals of the project hypothesis guiding the research now coming to the background and significance it is a difficult subsection to write but include end of the introduction section 
the first thing is you you state the current state of knowledge relevant to the proposal literature citation highlights and relevant data for example if you are trying to do a protein estimation and the protein estimation is done by the bradford method which was quoted in uh, 1934 in 2020 you give a reference of 1934 people laugh at you so please try to understand what is most relevant things most relevant references you need to give and what are the gaps that project is intended to fill that is what exactly you will also write down in the background and significance gaps in the knowledge base unmeet need to exit uh, exist and possess the problem if that gap continues to exist this should link to the objective and specific uh, aim section for example development of, development of vaccine for a disease now the rational for the proposed research the why the what is the basis of the study what is the foundation of the study and why why the experiments are being conducted you need to justify the need of research that will be proposed what makes the research significant and is this study is to confirm are you trying to confirm one plant has been used for the treatment of hiv or you are trying to see that it doesn't work or you are trying to put forth the extend the previous findings or trying to provide a new findings or, or is it just to test the one particular equipment and a new equipment comes you try to do a research whether this equipment works for the same similar purpose or not and the review of the literature is to do the original research one should be aware of ongoing research in one's field that is theoretical orientation and a focused thoughtful and critical review of the literature will help to build a cogent cogent problem statement and clear research question a strong conceptual framework will solidify the proposal this is what exactly the research uh, review of the literature is really required and systemic uh, careful review of literature will provide background background material on what has already been done in the area which means you know what is has been done and it avoids duplicating the study it gives you the many suggested variable tools techniques and it will give you the clear useful planning includes the information that can be valuable in interpreting the conclusions of the study present unique ideas useful to the current and future studies explain the relation of the current topic objectives significance significance in the fields uh, candidates field now what we try to do is we we try to put introduction as review of literature objectives hypothesis research questions and background and significance this is what exactly the introduction of any thesis of mfarm or phd or any proposal should have these things and after this then the next 33% one third is your experimentation in the experimental methodology a research design and methods will be done the purpose is to describe how the research will be carried out how you will be carrying out the literature uh, the research work the plan of study statistical analysis many of we we fail to use a right uh, statistical analysis materials methods instrumentation measuring techniques data recording collection difficulties and limitations now most of the times we assume that some things which you have cannot done you should clearly mention what were the limitations and difficulties in carrying out this work so that the next coming researchers will try to overcome these limitations and if at all if you have any ethical safety issues and timelines all these are mentioned in the experimental methodology now having shown you about 66% and i am trying to show that next few things why we have to write the papers now if you go and apply cv they will ask you have you published any papers these are the questions which we commonly get it so the the why we have to write scientific papers is the logical culmination of the research it is you are transferring informal domain to the formal domain for example you are you have done a great experiment in the palmer university under the guidance of pravakar reddy garu then what is the use only your people will knows but it has to be transferred so then you try to publish in good journals and then what happens is it will most appropriate acceptable means of informing peer community so you have lot of peer communities now thanks to the uh, internet and all whole world has become one 
So if you try to publish a paper, it will be available to throughout the world. So your image also will go up. And one more important thing you have to understand is you are writing the papers for the readers. The one who is reading should be able to simulate how exactly your thought process, how you have done the experimentation, how you have done the interpretation and confusion should, while he is reading, he should be able to visualize so that it, he will be able to understand very easily. That is what the, why we will try to publish the papers. Now, why we have to write well papers? So to get published fast, get assimilated rapidly, the one which you are giving in the form of a publication should be able to understand, assimilate the, your way of thinking and your experimentation, your theoretical Im implication, interpretations to them and enhances the chances of citability. Now, if you try to apply for a job, they will ask you, what is your citation index? I'm sure people are facing a lot of problem with citations, impact factor, uh, research gate score, this scale. So that is only to assess what is your research capability. And being if your citations are more, your image will also go up. And based on your citability and you know, uh, the index, it will help the readers to authenticate and a poorly written paper will be always will not be assimilated and you need some antacid to digest. Now, how do I select a journal? Selection of a journal is very, very important. And you just try to see, I've shown you some journals, for example, Journal of Pharmaceutical Science or Indian Journal of Pharmaceutical Science. It's a very journal, very uh, uh, vastly accepted journal, which accepts all kinds of pharmaceutical sciences papers. But does the journal, th there are some journals which are specific to some particular subject. For example, American Journal of Analytical Chemistry or Chromatographia will only try to have restriction towards uh, any chromatography kind of stuff only. And the, that is what you have to understand and you tr try to select a journal, whether it's specific journal for a particular area or a, or a journal which is having a broad interest. Now, what is the kind of uh, paper you are trying to publish? There are several kinds of uh, articles. One of them is research re uh, reviews and res original research papers, original communication, short communication, letters to the editor, letters to the note to the editors, all these are the kind of articles. And what is the type of data and what is the audience? Now, audience means, for example, if you are trying to do a pharmacological work and you better try to select it for Indian Journal of Pharmacology or Journal of Pharmacology or European Journal of Pharmacology. But if you try to send it to European Journal of uh, uh, Pharmaceutical Science or European Journal of uh, Biotechnology and you do a work of uh, work of, bio, uh, work of uh, pharmacology, they will never accept it and it is a futile exercise and uh, they will never be able to never be able to do that. And what is the speed of publication? The speed of publication is very, very important to quickly publish your paper. Basically because uh, there are few journals which, for example, Indian Journal of Natural Products, which publish only two times a year. But if you try to see, there are more issues in a year, 12 issues, 14 issues, then it becomes very easy of uh, 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 putting the things. Now, the other important thing is authorship is critical. Now, many of us try to publish, Prabhakar is my friend, I'll put my publication name, you put into your publication name. That is what becomes a ghost authors, friend authors, wife authors, husband authors, please try to follow the international guidelines, which is there in the Vancouver style of IC, ICMGE guidelines and people who have contributed to the research work, either mentally or they by critical comments, by writing the manuscript, then you have to put the authorship for the people. Now, what are the requirements of the journal? What is the style of requirement? Most of the journals will follow the IMRAD format. What is the specific requirements? Are they asking to write introduction first? Sometimes some people will only give you the experimentation and the results and then afterwards interpretation and introduction. What is the number of uh, tables, figures? Now, why we need to send the figures is thousand words can be put into one figure. That is most important. Some data which cannot be explained when we can put it in the form of tables 
and triggers and journal abbreviations copyrights declarations all these things are very very important while trying to publish and most of the acceptable format of sending the manuscript for the publication is imrad that is proposed by bradford hill a statistician from the uk in 1965 it helps write and understand the paper in the logical sequence now many of the universities accept the papers in medical and biomedical journal in the form of imrad uh, imrad format what is imrad introduction materials and methods results and discussions and this is the format recommended internationally for many of the medical and pharmaceutical science journals now the structure of the scientific paper is i think i've told you about introduction uh, everything but i will try to just explain you how the structure looks like first thing is why did you start a clear statement about hypothesis in the introduction section you try to review the literature why the study be brief and convincing include most relevant and recent references don't put the irrelevant references very old references people knows about all those studies then what and how did you do this is what experimental methodology how you have carried out what was your hypothesis how the answers were sought for the hypothesis tested details of study design data handling and ethics this is a section you need to understand these are the things that will be there then results what is that you have found that is what your result what are the answers uh, questions asked what is the answers raised in the introduction what are your findings make them in a logical sequence summarize reiterate important points judicious mixture of text tables figures data should match materials and methods report the negative findings and many of us assume that the negative findings are not the findings but on the contrary you have to understand that negative findings are most valuable findings and there are few journals for negative finding results also you can uh, publish it now what does it means anyway this is what exactly you have to put it in the discussion and conclusion section state main findings highlight your results visa versus visa earlier reports state strengths weakness of your study discuss the implications of the results and suggest the take home message or two lines for the future work and then as i told you title abstract and keywords are at the end these are very very important first everybody goes through the your abstract so the abstract should have a title should be very brief include all the key elements should be specific self contained the abstract should be structured with the relevant subsection keywords with the keywords only the people able to search for your papers so keywords are very very important you give appropriate keywords at least 5 to 6 now the references this is a sub section which most of us will not be able to do, do properly so you try to cite all papers relevant to your study cite most recent references only those published in indexed journal i am sure indexed journal means many of us we don't understand many journals are floated in the in the current market there are journals which are not indexed in any of the uh, databases which does not have any impact factor please don't take those into the confidence and you try to be careful while citing those papers and you need to put the acknowledgement in the form of support for example you have got a act fellowship or a ugc fellowship or some t cast fellowship and uh, all those things you have to and the final step is the first you write a draft please keep it for aside for a few days then try to re read then you will understand that when you write a first letter and assume that when you are engaged you might have wrote a first love letter this love letter was modified several times i am sure you know the younger generation will understand that of course now sms language is there but forget about that and uh, my generation used to write only love letters so this letter you write keep it aside and then you read am i that stupid to write this kind of letter you will find yourself 
and again you re read and rewrite rewrite 10 times 5 times 6 times then you will get into the good uh, draft the final step is try to check for the fluency clarity accuracy economy of word journal scientific style format of journal again see the check the author guidelines make up uh, make uh, the colleague treatment and before you send it what you try to do is you just try to show it to the your co researchers researchers ask them to read ask them to give their comments then finally you send it to the uh, journal and then there are few things you need to understand and once you send a publication to the journal the editor will try to read and if he found suitable then he will go, uh, will send it to the reviewers otherwise in the first phase itself you get the you get the rejection and you need to understand that you need to the paper will be undergoes for peer review system people who are working in that particular area and you need to understand at least to, to publish a paper in the indian journal of public indian journal of pharmaceutical science at least it takes 6 to 9 months you should have a patience into that the results should be always try to put it as tables figures graphs bar pie pictures this is to just to see that you will uh, the unexplaining things avoiding the words you try to put it these things so that they will be able to analyze the data by themselves the discussion part is very critical part what does it all means you have done experimentation you got the results the results will not gives you what is a kind of expected results then you start wondering what does it means that is what exactly you try to write in the discussion section what is a discussion and what is a relevance then in the discussion section to convince the readers the correctness of the author interpretation of the data and speculation you should always take the literature support which is published earlier and in the present systemic inter, uh, interpretation of results within the available knowledge try to minimize the bias this is what two things you have to remember then afterwards you see this becomes a very difficult to write these are the problems tend to too verbose too long it does issues not addressed by the study sequence does not flow introduce new information don't introduce any new information don't put any trivial obvious points ignore difficult to explain results this is what some of the problems which you try to face in the uh, while writing the discussion section if you are unable to uh, explain the uh, the some of the uh, uh, interpretation of the results you can say that this is difficult or this is there is no literature available to explain the lit uh, explain the these results and you can also put those question probably somebody will take further experimentation go ahead and find out the answers the structure of the discussion will be you find out state major findings you try to put strength and limitation your experimental design technique and results if you want to do it for example you might have done some experimentation with the uv if you want to extrapolate it to the hplc lcms probably that becomes very tough so that is what exactly you have to put it and the discussion you should uh, put it uh, finding findings versus existing information important minor findings also you can write implications and put in summary three four lines at the end of your discussion and the the discussion is should think and plan this is probably it will show the discussion part will show the uh, the thought process of the investigator you try to put them in four subheadings silent results few sentences strengths and limitation few sentences compare and contrast with, between the existing literature and conclusion take home message this is what exactly the discussion will look like so the fo the focus should be begin with most important point what is your important conclusion out of your experimentation what is a, a, a subject studied focus on the key issues provide the link between the paragraphs ensure that it will flow like a river don't introduce a new information in between 
don't start with the history don't repeat all your results don't provide a new data don't extrapolate religious don't say superlative my results are superior over the other existing results this is not the right way of doing the uh, discussion and what is your study design and sample size control variable assessed length of follow up techniques new established but previously used subsets and what are your limitations selection of bias dropouts suppose you have done a clinical trial few few uh, subjects have dropped what why it has dropped don't uh, ignore the unexpected findings sometimes you get unexpected results which you should be able to explain and you can put them under the limitation category now you can compare and contrast like good grasp of information provide explanation for differences and do not hesitate to criticize so you you can criticize the the earlier reports by reasonings and logical arguments and discuss opposing views so that's what exactly if you try to upload any paper now people ask you oppositing reviewers now what are the implications does it going to alter any clinical practice the public uh, policy understanding of pathogenesis will be different mechanism is different geographical thing is different and financial or financial implication speculate to intelligent all these are the implications of the study which you can put them in the that now the another important section is referencing and bibliography and why we should give a referencing and the bibliography is it provides a framework of literature that formed the hypothesis and basis of research link the papers article with the relevant articles provides additional information appropriate reference to the significant statements and fact or principles use of good reference tells you about the reviewers that you are aware of the latest development in the field discriminates your own work and and that forms that of others appropriate acknowledgement to prevent the plagiarism now there are three ways of giving uh, references one is citations which you try to put it in within the text or body of the document bibliography is you write some things and then at the end of the chapter end of the book you compile list of the references and then that that you try to give it those are called as bibliography bibliography will be seen in the thesis as well as in some of the textbooks and cross references one reference will be referred from the other reference those are called as the cross references and the recommendations is be accurate in giving a reference sometimes you write everything right but instead of 1939 you write 1949 which makes a big difference sometime you may miss the volume you miss the author all those are very very uh, important in writing the references check for typographical errors you don't have to write uh, the names of the people wrong and the author style abbreviation punctuation uh, all this should be uh uniform and self citation should be avoided then typographical errors all these are the some of the common errors which i have given which i have already talked about year volume edition page numbers authors so all these things should be avoided now there are two styles of two ways of writing references one is number format which is called as vancouver and the other harvard style i'll just try to if you are interested further information i have provided a link and which you can go through but i'll just show you for example a statement here which i have given your number 1 2 3 4 this is a numbering pattern number 2 3 4 uh, the author has discussed the implications of these proposals on the national health service in another paper this is number 1 that is annals of annas ga new drugs for acute respiratory distrome syndrome new england journal of medicine 1997 Three hundred thirty-seven volume, four thirty-five to four thirty-nine pages. So this is what a Vancouver style. Then we have uh, Harvard style. Probably this is one of the unique style, and this is one of the best style of writing the writing the uh, references. Author date format. Now you see here, author date format. The author discusses the implication of these proposals on the National Health Service in another. 
paper. This is Lap 1991. And similarly, Lane 1992, Lewis 1995. These are the authors. For example, same name, same year, the two authors are there. Then you can put Lap 1997A and 1997 Lap B. This is how you have to distinguish between the, the uh, references. This is what exactly I want to convey you. I thank uh, the Palamur University for giving me this opportunity. And uh, thank you one and all for your uh, patience listening. And if you have any, any questions, you can send to me an email, uh, which is I provided in my list, siddhivirasham at uh, sriramachandra.edu.in. I will try to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Please, sir, you can stop sharing. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for giving excellent and important questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for giving excellent and uh, informative session. Now I would like to invite our principal. Dr. Vipravakar, thank you. Thank you, Suresh. It's a wonderful discussion, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Such a celebration, sir. You have a lot of experience, almost 30 plus. And uh, really, it is very, very useful for uh, research scholars. Now, out of your 60 slides, I made a a single page, write some uh, research methodology and science writing. You have knowledge in biostatistics, and uh, you should find the thesis, how to write thesis, project work, and how to write a book, seminars, and uh, uh, what measures do I want to convey, write format, and uh, what is research, critical structural research, like research proposal, project, protocols, copyrights, and regarding labs, good uh, professor or mentor, luck, and burning desire, creativity, hard working, smart working, and uh, you advise, uh, you tell about, you already explained about uh, literature review, very, very important, I'm just still guidance for writing in a research project, Select a research, how to select a research topic, how to do literature survey, and the proposed research, a review of literature, experimental methods, instruments, data collection, and why you write a scientific paper, logical combination of research, transfer of new information, writing, it, is, it should be right for readers, select journal is very, very important, and speed of publication, impact factor nowadays, all any interview people are asking impact factor and implications and the references, especially a Vancouver style and hardware style. And finally, IMRAD format like introduction, materials and methods, research, results and discussion. Really, it's a wonderful talk. Uh, now people are not getting right guide and uh, uh, scholarships. Then how people will do the research? Sir? Uh, can I answer? Sir, can I answer? Yes, sir. Now, please, please, sir. Uh, uh, yes, now sir. the question number one is uh, the problem here is you how to look for uh, any kind of uh, place. You should leave the place for the sake of your uh, your research uh, problem. And there are ample number of research fellowships are available throughout the world. The globe is your family. And you try to uh, apply for Eisenham, Eisenberry number of ICE fellowships. Now Prime Minister Fellowship is there. DST Fellowship is there. ICMR Fellowship is there. SERB Fellowship is there. UGC Fellowship is there. RU's Commonwealth Fellowships are there and try to see where all the fellowships are available and choose the right guide. Why I'm trying to tell you is uh, probably people end up choosing a wrong guide and then they lose the career. 
and probably uh, if you try to look at the all the private universities policy of giving the guide is we have an advisory committee for a student so we will have three guides one is RA, one, two guides and one rsc member will be there three people will be mentoring like western style probably that should come even for the uh, classical uh, state universities uh, which are there in in, uh, in our uh, state also and uh, it is only continuous persuasion probably uh, if you have a continuous sankalpa sankalpa munte ganaka compulsory ga mi 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 goal anedi possible avutadi with my own experience uh, i think you know dr prabhakar reddy your guide uh, dr v venkateshwarlu and myself was the uh, co scholars working with professor kokate and we had a strong burning desire while doing a phd uh during 1988 to 91 we had a desire to go, do a post doc and believe me uh, i posted new can corner of uh, the world where all the all the people who are working in the plant cell culture i wrote a letter to the including papa new guinea japan here and there and finally i got one contact from mansori asada of uh, japanese uh, uh, professor who has recommended me to professor mike schuler mm-hmm. and where i have done my post doc so you should have a desire burning desire that is what exactly i have told you i want to do this i'm sure this generation has lot of advantage of technical uh, uh, know how of world wide web is available you can talk to the people you convince that i am a sincere guy i am sure people will give an opportunity to do a phd and after doing that's how you know you nowadays you find lot of uh, Uh, uh researchers going to the western world and becoming the faculty if you see any of the university on the us or uk uh-huh. or uh, us and uk and uh, similarly in the australia many of them are faculties and people becoming an assistant professors it is not that the opportunities are not available for uh, indians we are very smart and we have a very good iq but only thing is the uh, attitude problem is there and if you make it your attitude correct i am sure you will get everything and i wish all the best sir, for our younger people sir one question in chat box yes which which impact factor should we consider while publishing the paper which so impact factor is required to publish a paper what is the impact factor minimum ah minimum we should go for something like at least indian contest 0.5 at least 0.5 minimum bare minimum it is like a pass marking Okay, but nowadays, no people are sending papers, sir. Nowadays, people are sending papers. Next day, it is publishing. Is it uh, worth? It is a garbage. It's a garbage, <laughs> sir. Don't encourage anybody. No review. Sir. Nothing. If somebody publishes, five hundred thousand. Five hundred thousand, and they are publishing within uh, one week or two weeks. <laughs> and they are claiming the impact factor also. They they don't know. Factor. You please try to tell them people that Thomas Reuter impact factor or Cleverett analytic impact factor is required. I specifically write what is your impact factor because you know to to uh, distinguish between bad eggs and good eggs, you need to have some ad stick. The ad stick is the Thomas Reuter or Cleverett analytic impact factor. Or you can see any private image. Hmm. Many, many, many private universities are offering PhD, but their teaching fees are very, very high, minimum one lakh. So, can we do that? Is it acceptable by the UGC? The problem here is you have to understand uh, a few things, uh, Prabhakar Reddy. Uh, one thing yeah. is, uh, uh, unless otherwise background is checked. whether what is a kind of services which are offered by the private university then only you should go there and try to pay the fee but if you don't get enough service you should not pay the many of uh, i don't want to criticize anybody few people will go to some rajasthan some tamil nadu some uh, patna yes, and get a phd that is not really 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 uh, required and in fact your image is goes down if he is a right person cv goes it will be goes into the garbage so please check even if you don't do a phd the heaven is not going to fall down but don't get a, don't acquire a phd from unreputed 
not known in university known guide is very important known guide means he should be have a credibility the credibility of the guide is also very important they will look what is your scientific uh, uh, capacity in terms of which lab you come which university you come who is your guide i hope i have clarified thank you, you. <laughs> yes sir sir thank thank you very much sir for your valuable time for sparing on holiday really it is very very useful for our budding pharmacists especially scholars even staff who are doing phd yeah. now uh, please go to suresh thank you sir thank you very much for giving a very wonderful session which will be useful for the research scholars and budding pharmacists and uh, thank you sir for accepting our request and coming to online for giving a wonderful presentation thank you sir and i would like to thank our in charge vice chancellor rahul bojja garu dr pindi pawan kumar garu registrar palmur university osd to vice chancellor madhusudan garu ceo n kumar swami garu and the man behind this international webinar series none other than our beloved dynamic principal dr v prabhakar reddy garu and all our colleagues thank you thank you one and all teaching and not teaching and the next session will be conveyed by the our colleague ch ravikanth over to ravikanth thank you Good morning, all of you. I welcome you all to the second session of this international webinar series. Today, have today we are having a most eminent speaker from. industrial that is dr tota satyanarayana tota satyanarayana has graduated from st peter's institute of pharmaceutical sciences and he has completed his masters in clinical research from cranfield university currently is working as uh, clinical currently is working as clinical data manager in novartis health sciences let me give a brief introduction about dr satyanarayana Dr. Satyan has worked in many reputed companies. He has worked as a scientist in pharmacokinetics departments in Dr. Reddy Labs. He worked as a senior executive in Sun Pharma. He also worked as a manager in ZS Cadilla Healthcare Limited. Okay, Dr. Satyan is having of 11 years of industrial experience. He is expertised in clinical trials design, bioavailability and bioequivalence studies, and extensively worked on oral. solids and topical dosage forms currently satrana is working as clinical development manager in novartis healthcare limited today satrana will be discussing about generic drug development a clinical perspective i hope the session will be very useful for all the b form as well as m form students i welcome satrana to this international webinar series organized by university college of pharmaceutical sciences in collaboration of indian, indian association of pharmacy welcome satyanand garu thank you so much uh, ravikant garu uh, so i i am edible i am edible yeah 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 you are edible uh, thank you yeah thank you so much for this opportunity uh, i am special thanks to dr prabhak reddy sir and entire faculty of palambur university who given this opportunity to me so uh, i just wanted to uh, have understand make you understand the students of b form and m form and from the students how the industry will work uh, in indian scenario how the generic companies will work so i would like to uh, give you touch base on the concepts of bioequivalence majorly so here would be my presentation i just sharing uh 
I hope you all seeing my presentation, right? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So uh, thank you again, once again, uh, for the nice introduction, Ravikant Garu. So uh, currently I'm working as a clinical development manager in Novartis. So earlier to this, I worked in uh, Dr. Reddy's uh, and Sun Pharma and Chaidas uh, in the pharmacokinetics department. Let, let us, I will. Uh, so I will let to. Yeah, once again. So. All down. right. Okay, right. I got it. No, fine. So uh, I have uh, divided my uh, presentation into three segments. Uh, one is clinical trials, uh, its overview and challenges, how we need to conduct. And second uh, segment would be PAB studies and concept of bioequivalent studies and generic industry. Uh, my major focus on uh, this. Uh, yeah. yeah, slide, yeah, slide. Second slide, not sure. Only for not slide sure. Okay, yeah. sorry. Scroll, sir. Let's scroll down. Is it now okay, sir? Coming. Right? Uh, yeah, thank you so much. No, uh, only, no, only, no, only title, title slide is coming. Okay, uh, just. It's fine now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you so much. Fine, fine, fine. Please, right. yes, thank you, great. So uh, today my presentation, I have divided into three segments. Uh, first one would be uh, clinical trials. Uh, it's overview and challenges. And second segment would be BAB studies and concept of bioequivalent studies, how the generic industries in India will work. So my main focus in this area. So uh, third one would be what are the alternative and novel approaches FDA is trying through uh, science initiative uh, to reduce the human trials. So let us go to uh, one by one, first of all. Uh, I would like to have like, the first segment would be clinical trials. <clears throat> so this picture is clearly uh, says how the clinical trials used to conduct in early nineties. So I'm not going to much into deep about the Naji trials, how they have uh, conducted and uh, how the declaration of Helsinki come into picture, what is the informed consent that will be available in book. So I am not going to that much in uh, deep. So uh, in general, clinical trials is like, one second. Clinical trials is a systematic uh, investigation uh, in like uh, in human for the evaluating safety and efficacy of a, any new drug. So any trial conducted on human being, it's called as clinical trials. If you perform any drug on uh, animals, it will be considered as a preclinical trials. So uh, like I would recommend uh, students, all the students, uh, please uh, who are in the form D or M form, so go, go through the clinical, good clinical practice, which is available in the uh, this uh, below link. So it will uh, GCP, uh, ICS GCP uh, derived in 1996 uh, by the combination from US, Europe and Japan. So they derived some uh, responsibilities of each and everyone. They like based on the uh, earlier issues. So if you go through the GCP part, you will come to know uh, what is the role of sponsor, what is the role of uh, CRC, what is the role of CRA, uh, what is the role of CRO, what is the monitoring, what is the audit, you will come to know all these. So any clinical trials conduct across the globe, should be in line with the, this good clinical practice of ICH GCP. So uh, like, as you are aware, like clinical trials, how they conducted, like let us see like preclinical studies, which are conducted in lab scales and animal. So after that, if you get promising results from preclinical, then drug will enter into the phase one studies. So before this, it was called as a IND submission, investigation lead drug submission. So uh, later on, once you get approval for that, then we'll conduct the phase one trial. The phase one trial would be uh, conducted in 22 IT subjects, mostly healthy subjects. And objective of this trial is to uh, know the safety of the new molecule. So once you get uh, perform the phase one study and you get promising results, then go for the phase two trial. So phase two trial would be conducted generally in 100 to 300 participants. Uh, main objective of this to understand the efficacy, how your drug is uh, working on patients. 
Okay, so once you get the results from phase two trial, then go for the phase three trials. It will conduct in a large scale, like it will require around thousand to three thousand patients. And again, the objective of this trial is to understand safety as well as efficacy, which you have trialed in the uh, performed in the earlier studies. So once you have done your phase three trial, then go for the NDA submission. You call as the uh, FDA submission to the NDA, the new drug application. So agency will review. It will take some time, one to two years time. Then once they get any deficiencies kind of, they will come to the organization. Then otherwise they will give approval. Once you got drug approved, then drug goes into phase four trial. What you call in the adverse events reporting system. Phase four is the mainly uh, adverse events reporting system. So different countries will follow different uh, mechanism in adverse event reporting system. But overall clinical trials uh, scenario is like this phase one to phase four. So uh, as I said, like uh, how the uh, timelines, let us see target and timelines, how much timelines it will take for all these trials. Like uh, preclinical trials, it will take around one to three years, roughly. So you will go for the IND submission. FDA will give time uh, 30 days and they will uh, give the permission to go ahead for the clinical trials. Then you will conduct phase one, phase two, phase three. It will take around two to 10 years sometimes because of the complex of the uh, molecule. So the later stage will be in uh, NDA review. It will take two months to seven years also sometimes, average two years. Then it gets to post-marketing. So overall, if you take any drug coming to market, it will take around 100 months from the initial synthesis to approval of NDA. It is like huge time, huge investment, huge involvement of the people, huge time, you can say. Like almost 10 to 15 years overall program. So uh, suppose uh, if, if, we, if we can see the quantum of work, uh, how much it will happen. In the synthesis case stage, if you screen 5,000 to 10,000 molecules, then it will, and 250 will enter into the clinical testing, preclinical that to be. And from that uh, 250 molecules, five will enter into the clinical phase. So uh, it doesn't mean that every uh, drug need to be passed from the clinical trials. So one drug will approve. So you can imagine how much quantum of work will uh, happen in clinical trials, how much cost involved. This, this picture is a clear idea on that part. So uh, I would like to give some insights how the clinical trials really conduct. The study design would be randomized controlled trials. What does it mean by randomized? Randomized means mainly to avoid the uh, biasness in the study. So people uh, will uh, assign, like patients will assign to uh, either new molecule or uh, controlled drug will assign to old drug will assign to other few of the subjects randomly, not not as uh, like uh, when they want. So it will randomize. Randomize means uh, if 100 subjects are there, 50 will be randomized to new drug, 50 will be randomized to already available in the market in the same category. Then uh, follow up will be take place and uh, then intervention of the results will take place. Then outcome will be compared against the already available drug. Sometimes if drug is not available, then this will be evaluated against the placebo. So mainly I would like to say in this presentation, like the randomized control trials uh, is the authorized trials mainly to uh, reduce the biasness in the trials. So uh, if I see clinical uh, trials, how this will be conducted, as I said, GCP, uh, there are clearly mentioned roles and responsibility of each and every party, like sponsor, CRO, CRC, and everyone. So either sponsor directly can conduct clinical trials, or they can assign some, some, art, some of work to the CROs. CRO means clinical research organizations. So uh, they will, if the these studies are conducted multicentric uh, patient-based studies, so typically these studies conducted like in, uh, in patients, like in hospitals mainly, what you call in sites. So uh, when sponsor will alert the uh, trial to the CRO, CRO will take uh, trials in the multicentric trial, like across the India or across the globe. They will attach, uh, means in co collaboration with hospitals, they will uh, uh, perform the trial. In hospital, mainly it's the CRC role, um, like clinical research coordinator, who will uh, like point of contact for each and every one. They, he will be contact with the ethics committee to get the approval from protocol. He will contact with the medical team, like investigator, principal investigator and hospital administrative team. He will uh, take uh, support from the principal investigator and he will uh, like communicate with the lab to uh, and perform lab regulatory involvement. And he will communication with the nurse and all everything for the adverse event report kind of then uh, medicines he will adding get the pharmacy uh, medicines and he will like involve with the patients in taking of icf and all so crc would be the center point in conducting clinical trials in site level what i called but ultimate responsibility lies with the sponsor uh, to get the study conduct ethically and scientifically and to submit to the agency and address the deficiency 
so uh, just i have uh, addressed important documents uh, which we use in the clinical trials like sorry so uh, uh, CT protocol means any trial before designing the any trial, it should be based on the one protocol, what you call it. The protocol will consist of uh, study formulation details, uh, study objective, uh, study endpoint, uh, what are the measures, what are the uh, parameters need to be measured, what are the analytical methodology you have to follow, how many patients you have to recruit. Uh, entire it will give a uh, structure, uh, structured way, entire uh, details need to be followed in the protocol. So uh, if if sites uh, will have SOPs also, but always protocol, yes, I think somebody raised their hand. Should I take any questions in between or else how? Sir, I can't hear you. Sir, no questions in between. Please continue, sir. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. So uh, protocol will be the document. Uh, sometimes uh, CRO will have their SOPs, but always protocol will supersede the SOPs. Whatever defined in the protocol, you have to follow that, like inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, and everything. So uh, later, later, once protocol will be uh, finalized, then it will get it be uh, approved by the ethics committee. So ethics committee, like you can read that ethics committee. How the ethics committee. I know. Uh, like ethics committee will consist of five members they will review go to scientifically and ethically and they will uh, give permission uh, to conduct the study if they feel uh, it is okay i think some drawing are there on slides okay so uh, third one would be a source document like information sheets uh, patient source document what you call patient's information sheet when patient visit to the site and doctor usually uh, investigator will take uh, his condition like his age his criteria any past history uh, his sex is kind of demographic information he will take and uh, he will uh, record uh, the condition of the patient from how long he is suffering from that and what are the medication he has used so that all should be part of the clinical trial and then informed consent form this is very very important uh, in clinical trial that you have to take consent from the patient what participating in the trial and like there are certain criteria there if patient has above 18 years of age you can take informed consent then if patient is below 18 years of age then you have to take a legal authorized uh, permission also along with the informed consent so a uh, case record form case record form would be uh, what are the trial uh, uh, activities will be recorded in the case record form you call it crf nowadays uh, along with so yeah, nowadays, along with paper CRF, eCRF is mostly using in all the trials. So it is easier uh, when comparing the paper CRF. So undertaking by the investigator, investigator will sign and authorize. I am the responsible for the uh, this uh, uh, safety of the patient. That would be the undertaking by the investigator. And CV of the investigator will be attached with that. And animation sheet I have explained earlier. And laboratory certificate. All the laboratory tests you have performed that goes to uh, accreditation from the national regulators. And analytical method validation that should be available with the CROs and chromatograms of all uh, volunteers will be available in the part of CRS uh, documents. Uh, still, uh, as I explained, the clinical trials, how we are conducting, what are the documents I have specified, but it is a big challenge to conduct the clinical trials. So I have highlighted only two to uh, four, four uh, challenges over here. First in the enrollment of the patient, like uh, any clinical trial, like as I said, phase one, phase two, phase three, you need to conduct uh, trials across the globe. So enrollment will be a big challenge. Like sometimes trials need 1,000 to 2,000 patients. So within the timeline, it is a very challenge challenging to right kind of patient you have to get like if, if drug is indicated for cancer you have to get that particular uh, breast cancer patients in that period so it is very challenging enrollment as well as dropout dropout in the sense it doesn't mean that every patient will continue uh, the study and uh, complete the entire clinical trial so almost in any clinical trials you can expect 30 to 40 percent of the dropout so the trial if more dropout will be there like the situation kind of pandemic uh, or what is going on so there will be big issues in these kind of situations the second would be uh, blending. So most of the clinical trials, you have to prove superior with the placebo. Oh, sorry, I am talking about blending part. Blending part means most of the uh, clinical trials definitely need to be performed blended to avoid biasness. So either these are uh, single uh, blinded or double blinded, triple blinded. So I have referred this double blinded doesn't mean that uh, either investigator or patient doesn't know what the treatment is going to uh, given. 
So this will be mainly a challenging part uh, in terms of formulation, pharmaceutical companies to make uh, uniform formulations. Like if the vial is containing such kind of uh, uh, like uh, uh, equipment, so you have to you know, match with the innovator kind of uh, the same formulation you have to develop with the innovator. So that kind of challenges you have to always uh, face you know, during the blending. And third one would be uh, results and uh, placebo. Like results in the sense, yes, if you get positive outcome, that is very good. But because of the placebo, you have to always prove like uh, superiority against the placebo. That is also biggest challenge in clinical trials. And fourth one would be, I would say like uh, audits. These are the most crucial part in conducting clinical trials. Like agencies will uh, review the data thoroughly. Uh, each and every, uh, like they will randomly, they will select if you study conducted in multi center like 10 to 15 sites, they will randomly select three, eight to nine sites or they will go through each and every site and they will review each and every data, whether it is source data, whether it is CRF, ICF. If they find any difficulty, any discrepancy in the data, so definitely they will go to like clear, not, not give any clearance for that. They will go with the 483s kind of, it is very tough to clear FDS uh, audits. So these are the big challenges in conducting clinical trials, I would say. So uh, that's the reason, uh, like as I mentioned, how much cost it is involved, how much timelines, uh, and uh, what are the complexity, like 5,000 you have to screen, then one would be come for the FDA. So that's the reason uh, I uh, would like to say that BAB concept would be highly encouraging. So this is for generic already wood, which is available in the uh, market. So uh, I would like to here summarize two examples, recent examples, like we are, uh, we will know that uh, what are the COVID uh, impacting in across the globe. So we heard about the heteros uh, like a remdesivir injection. This is the first generic company to launch generic of remdesivir. If you go through the like clinical trials, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, it will take much time. So that's the reason like already available drug remdesivir is already available. So hetero has tried with their generic uh, Genetic version and they launch it. This is the one best example. This will really help, like the same efficacy it will show, as well as it will reduce the cost and time. That is the main objective of the genetic companies. The second would be, as I said, like uh, Fabi Flu is from the uh, Glenmark. And they are, it is mainly they have highlighted that this is not for the cureness of uh, uh, COVID. This is only to treat mild to moderate case of COVID. And this is a written informed consent form of each patient is mandatory. They have clearly mentioned on this, but this is one of the genetic to, to flaviflavir. So these are the recent examples I have covered. So let us see in depth of this uh, BEB concept. So as I mentioned in my earlier studies, like in and conducting of any NDA requirement, you have to go through all these phases like chemistry, manufacturing controls, labeling. Apart from this, you have to perform animal studies, what you call preclinical, and then go for the clinical studies, then go for the bioavailability studies. So whereas conducting the BAB studies, so uh, you no need to, like these are the formation development will be there definitely, but you no need to again perform animal studies. You no need to go through the, all the phases like BA phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. You just uh, show the equivalence against the RLD molecule, then you can mark it. This would be a simple concept by equivalence. So uh, I have highlighted few uh, organizations, uh, uh, sorry, either uh, like, so I have mentioned earlier studies also, like uh, NDA part, it will take expensive around cost $2 million. It will take 12 to 15 years and 5,000 new drugs candidates, if you screen one drug will approve. Whereas in comparing with the generic, it is very simple BEV studies. Each study will cost around one crore to two crores. And it will take hardly 1.5 to two years if it will depend on the complexity of the molecule and 30 to 80% cheaper when coming to uh, uh, product uh, outcome, uh, uh, end product price. So it is very cheap. And uh, so this is a main advantage uh, for the generic industry to look forward. So I would like to uh, highlight here a few of the global players who are, who are currently working on Innovator as well as Genric. So Innovator point of view, I would say like Bayer, Merck, Roche, Novartis, Pfizer, GSK, j, &J they invest huge money and huge uh, 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 scientists uh, you know, working on the clinical trials, the clinical trials. So I would say like uh, basically genetic companies I have highlighted DRL, you can say Sun, Glenmark, Hetero, Lupin, Jade, Sarbindo. These are mainly Indian genetic companies. Like India is a top most in uh, developing the genetic, uh, uh, genetic development. 
So how the generic will be connected? First, you have to choose the reference product. So reference product would be identify the regulatory authorities. Like if FDA is there, they will designate it in the orange book status. This would be the reference drug. So you have to consider that as a reference drug. So it is already protected by patent. And to some extent, some period of uh, patent will be there, like two years, seven years kind of. Then, then it will be marketed under manufacturer's brand name and clinical efficacy and safety. This is a more advantage. Profile is already well documented. So you can uh, consider, suppose here a case, I have a depicted picture of Lipitor. It is as a 20, 40, 10 mg. It is where you can consider as one, one among them, which is marketed as a RLD. You can take it as a RLD from Orange Book. Then generic would be definitely drug product, which is identical to bioequivalent. Identical means identical in terms of active ingredient, in terms of route of administration, in terms of dosage form, in terms of strength, in terms of indication, in terms of safety. So all should be identical uh, with the reference drug and may have some differences like in active ingredients, you can add some, some to extent and color and shape. This is a generic, the, what we generic companies will develop usually. So fundamental is that when generic drug is claimed to bioequivalent, it is mean that it is removed that both are therapeutically equivalent, means generic and reference are equivalent. So how it will be like, but still a generic is not also that much easy what we assume, like first how we will conduct the generic because of the property of the molecule, you have to derive which kind of studies you have to perform. So uh, like uh, like uh, descending order, I would say that the first and foremost and best method would be pharmacokinetic methods. Pharmacokinetics means that when you administer the drug in systemic absorption, you have to measure simple or how much drug you have uh, absorbed into the blood, your plasma system. So this is very simple and this can con conduct it in controlled environment and cost also very less. So typically 90% of the bioequivalent studies will go through this uh, pharmacokinetic studies. Then uh, second would be pharmacodynamic studies. Uh, majorly when you cannot measure the pharmacokinetic aspects like drug in the your plasma, then go for the pharmacodynamics. For example, I have taken here like uh, glucocorticoids or any uh, osteomodulated drugs, pulmonary drugs or any kind of heparin kind of, you cannot measure the PK parameters, then go for the PD. So a few drugs are only, I can say example here. And third one would be clinical studies. Sometimes along with the PK and PD studies, you have to go with the PG, uh, clinical studies, uh, mainly for the oncology products and for the topical dosage forms. These are indicated in directly patients. So you have to recruit those kind of patients and you have to conduct uh, clinical studies. Clinical studies doesn't mean that phase one, phase two, phase three. It is called only phase three. It is somewhat better than the uh, entire, what you call clinical trials. So for NDA, it is uh, like uh, take our one, one to two years time, depend on the patient size and all. I will go through uh, later slides. And the fourth one would be um, a dissolution study. These are at least descending order, like in vitro in vivo correlation you have to perform and by waiver submission, you can go with the PCS class drugs. So these are the descending order, I would say that concept. So I just wanted to uh, make you sure that uh, how the, PAB studies, your pharmacokinetic studies will conduct in clinical uh, research organization. Uh, so uh, I am not going to much detail what is the pharmacokinetics, like you uh, need to study about the absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, when you drug administer your drug into systemic circulation. So uh, I have depicted picture of oral solid administered when you administer oral solid, you, one hour time, sorry, uh, within five to 15 minutes, it will reach uh, to some onset of action. Then it will go to two to three hours, it will reach to uh, Tmax levels. So uh, the drug where absorbed Tmax is called, like concentration is called as Cmax. And the entire area will be uh, measured using the trapezoidal rules. It called as area under the curve, AGC. So agency is always showing interest to uh, match with the innovator uh, by 90% confidence interval of these two parameters. Because these are the two physiological parameters, Cmax and UC. You compare with the innovator and you have to prove the both products are equivalent in between the 80 to 125 concept. So uh, let us see how the BAB studies will conduct. Like if I would say like I am the sponsor, I would assign the work to CROs and I will evaluate the property of the molecule. If it is like a required patients, as I said, uh, oncology drug or else any topical or any antipsychotic kind of, it cannot measure on the healthy subject, then go for the patient. Otherwise always prefer for the healthy subject. So if it goes to the patient, patient based study, as I mentioned in my previous studies, need to be conducted in hospitals or site, execution will take place like investigator, uh, will be responsible to conduct the studies, okay? And, um, uh, patient enrollment will take place at hospitals level and the clinical uh, uh, conduct will be take place at hospitals level. But whereas in healthy subject studies, like you have to coordinate with the CRO, there are three clear phase, uh, phases will be there in the 
uh, bioequivalent studies. One would be clinical, second would be bioanalytical, third one would be statistical. So what are the activities will take place in each and everything? Clinical, uh, uh, in clinical phase, like check-in and check-out of the patient will take place and dosing and sampling. I will uh, brief in next slide uh, for about this, uh, uh, these activities and safety will take care of subjects. When coming to bioanalytical part, they will develop into the method development and method validation. Uh, one second, please. One second. One second. Venu? Sorry. So... Hello. Yeah, sorry. So uh, second phase would be uh, MDMV means they will develop method development and method validation, and they will analyze uh, samples through LCMS methods and plasma concentration will be shared to a uh, statistical team. So they will do like PK analysis using phenylalanine software and statistical using STAR software and CSR will be take place. So this would be overall uh, bicolor studies concept. So in my next slides, like process, the step-by-step -step I have mentioned here, this will give uh, entire picture of bio studies. Like first uh, protocol, like where, as I said, sponsor will coordinate with the CRO and both in coordination with the CRO protocol will develop what you call in bio study protocol. Then it will be graded uh, approval from the IEC. Okay, so uh, once the protocol will be uh, approved from the IEC, then it will go like next slotting will be taken from CRO and a drug will be shipped to CRO uh, to conduct the study. Then CRO will uh, screen the subject, first of all. So they will screen like if subject required 40 subjects, they will screen 60 to 80 subjects. Then from there, they will recruit who are uh, ready to give the assay informed consent and they will uh, like check into the subject, into the trial. So once a subject will check it into the trial, like uh, drug need to be administered in tomorrow 8 o'clock, then uh, as per the regulatory guidelines, you have to uh, perform the check-in activity 10 or yeah, 12 hours before uh, to the dosing, uh, because to mainly to standardize the subject. Uh, to standardize in the sense, I will brief in uh, uh, next slides, like you have to regulatory uh, requirement uh, like you have to standardize the patients. Then uh, once the patient will be standardized in day prior, the next day a uh, dosing will take place. So, like you have to administer drug along with the whatever the uh, requirement has for the guidance and protocol like 240 ml of water typically. Then blood sample will be uh, collected and check out of the subject will be take place where depend on the protocol like whether 24 hours after confinement or 48 hours or 72 hours, then subject will be uh, checked out from the clinical sector. Then, uh, then sample analysis will take place uh, in bioanalytical phase, and they will measure the parameters like uh, using LCMS. Then uh, the data will be shared to PK and statistical team, and they will analyze the CMAX and DUC, mainly uh, criteria, whether it is fitting into PE criteria or not, then if it is meeting, then go for the uh, report submission. A report will be reviewed, prepared, and that will be submitted to the agency. So from beginning to protocol development to CSR would be the uh, activities take place in coordination with the CR1 sponsor. So ultimate uh, responsibilities lies with the sponsor uh, to submit the CSR with the agency because they uh, are the point of contact. If any deficiencies will come, they will uh, address uh, in coordination with the CR or anyone, then they will scientifically address. So in my mention in earlier slide, I mentioned standardization. What are the standardization required, like age? Regulatory regulatories differ, but most of the vehicle um, studies, 18 years age and above, you have to take into the study. And BMI, most of the case, like 18.5 to 30 mg per kg square bed BMI. Six, a few guidelines say that uh, either six, like male or female, few guidelines say that uh, whoever, like if drug is administered into the female, then you have to uh, like uh, take that female volunteers only, that kind of. Then fasting condition. As I mentioned, fasting condition typically maintained 10 hours prior to the drug administration. This is mainly to uh, get the uh, discrimination of the, your product and may, uh, means mainly to reduce the variability of the uh, drug. Then food administration. And so which kind of food you have to administer into the uh, trial participant? That is also mandatory. And you have to standardize that, which kind of food and what are the time. Like after you drug administer, then you have to, you should not give food until four to five hours. Then after two to three hours or whatever the meals time is there, then you can follow. 
then diet restrictions you have to follow as i mentioned what are the timelines you have to define in the protocol uh, water restriction definitely uh, one hour prior to drug administration one hour post drug administration these are typically derived from the guidelines and post exercise this really impact on the drug metabolism so should standardize and alcohol restriction typically non alcoholic should be included into the trial and uh, non smokers definitely the regulator say that non smokers should be into the trial and other uh, concomitant medication should not also take into the bab studies and time of administration if uh, pil says that drug need to be administered in the evening time then you go for the evening time administration or morning time then go for the morning so these are the need to housing i mean to say that confinement some some drugs require like some drug side effects will be there some sedation kind of so you cannot uh, allow patient to check out from your trial after participation you have to like uh, make them sure that they will very safe uh, so that's what you have to extend your wash, uh, confinement period over here then wash out typically these studies will be conducted in crossover manner mainly to avoid uh, like uh, mainly to get intercept variability so in that case uh, how much proper wash out period you have to maintain these need to be standardized so uh, so why it is required standardized mainly regulatory requirement it is like us ema health canada australia everyone they say their own requirements so it is requirement as per their uh, standards and majorly to uh, avoid intercept variability high so uh, like uh, so next uh, uh, would be my uh, slide would be like um, what are the main parameters which impact be studies in designing such what is pilot pivotal first we have to conduct pilot study like why it is required just to get the information on your formulation what you have done what you have prepared you want to know the how your formulation will behave okay and more, moreover you have to check uh, method uh, clarification also whether method is proper or not to analyze that before directly jumping to the pivotal because pivotal is very huge cost uh, rather than clinical you have to go with the exhibit batch you have a lot of cost involvement with the uh, api and formulation and everything so before the, directly jumping into the pivotal it is better to pilot for complex molecules to understand the uh, biological method to get some information on the uh, pk sampling time patch and all then whether it is single dose or multiple dose or so single dose study you have to perform multiple dose depend on the regulatory requirement is different to different then sample size some trials would say like uh, require it is total depend on the intra subject variability if it is less than 30% of variability then go for the like 40 to 50 subject is enough if the variability is greater than 30 percentage uh, it is required sometimes 100 to 120 subjects to avoid that you have to change your design either replicate or full replicate kind of that will, i will explain in later slides then half life uh, how much half life your drug is there if it is greater half life more than 24 hours then you have to design your trial in the truncated manner like truncated in the sense you have to cut off your ac to up to 72 hours ideally that is a practice so these are the challenges across you come while designing the be studies like study condition what i mentioned whether study need to be funded for working fasting or fed and study restriction and inclusion exclusion who need to be included and who subject to be included excluded and sampling time pants like uh, you need to cover uh, c max uh, auc and uh, t max so you have to design your sampling time pass in such a way to cover all these things and what are the analyzes to be measured some regulators say that if a parent is not measured to go for the metabolite kind of if parent is there then go for the parent only so you have to design such a way and you have to some drugs measure uh, in urine some drugs measured in plasma mostly plasma so that you have to go through these uh, information and then finally a uh, pk stats also regulatory regulatory difference is there they have to you have to cope up with that and you have to such a design in such a way of be studies so this is a little bit technical uh, things i i feel it is too technical for the b farm students but believe i wanted to just give some concepts so it will help for them actually so uh, pk parameters i said in my first slides also like c max aec and t max would be primary pk parameters and secondary would be half life kel t lag for modified release formulations and so uh, like uh, study designs typically what we follow a two way crossover parallel replicated two way crossover means uh, like it it is a design in such a way that standardized design what you call two sequence two period crossover design means if you design a uh, uh, study like uh, 40 subjects will be recruited in your study 20 subjects will be goes into treatment uh, test in one period uh, reference in the same period 
and after wash out period of 7 days or 14 days then the same subject will receive a reference and second period and the in the first period who have received test they will receive reference so this is the way of crossover mainly to get, uh, avoid intraspecific variability these are typically follows in uh, for most of the molecules so uh, so, uh parallel studies will be second would option these will be conducted when uh, half life is more like drugs are showing half life greater than 24 hours if you go for the crossover manner it will take much time like uh you have to follow like say one to 10 half life uh, for the crossover so it is big challenging um, in terms of dropout and everything so ideally better to go with a parallel study means uh, 40 subject among 40 subject 20 will receive test and 20 will receive reference and they will check out from the study they will not be any wash out there will not be any again period 2 and they will out from the study so pk will be major instead of ac they will go for the ac uh, 0 to 72 then third one would be replicated this uh, replicated in the sense where isvv greater than 30 percentage then you have to conduct these studies these either uh, four way cross uh, four way crossover replicated or three way four way in the sense one subject in one period will receive test second period will receive reference third period again test fourth period will be reference so with this reference to reference variability you will get uh, with that regulatory criteria is differ to differ i will explain in next slide only suppose uh, for the two way crossover studies i have mentioned the acceptance criteria would be 92 to 90% ci limit would be 80 to 125.00 this would be regulatory requirement uh, if, if you see this is fda so for all the three parameters like c max a c t a c infinity whereas emea will says that only for c max and e c t and that to be 80 to 125 the same for the two way crossover study and third one would be uh, health canada these are uh, uh, like uh, like only decimal would be 80.00 they will not allow even to 00 also and this would be the global regulatory differences overall i would say that 82 to 125 for 90 percent ci limits for the two way crossover and i may mentioned highly variable drugs regulatory difference is there if 30 percent is more than variability then uh, us fda says that if if variability is less than 30 then go for the this 90 percent criteria if it is greater than 30 percent is then go for the two approaches one is 95 percent upper confidence bone it should be less than or equal to 0 and third one would be point estimate should be uh, 80 to 125 whereas coming with the emea they uh, there is no option for the auc widening they would uh, uh, option given for only for c max and it depend on the variability like 30 40 50 so you can widen uh, your limit to 69 to 143 that is a maximum limit whereas health canada they have not given widening option for c max they have given widening option for auc and they are also widening option like 80 to 125 if it is greater than less than 30 if it is more than 30 then the acceptance criteria would be 60 6 to 150 so it is regulated regulated different you have to meet those criteria as per according to suppose i have uh, given one small example i have performed one pilot study a two way crossover uh, like my if i see my 90% ci limit like 80 to 125 it should be there but here in this case it is 81 is the lower limit and upper limit would be 139 so it is not bioequivalent the same way for auc also it is for 136 so it is not bioequivalent why because we got variability more like 39 37 so whatever sample size i have chosen is not sufficient for this study so for this if you want to conduct the same two way crossover i need to perform again study by based on this variability based based on this t bar ratios i would increase my sample size around it will take 120 140 kind of so instead of that i would change my design my design would be partial replicate or full replicate so in this case i got my variability 30 percentage so i just need to meet two criteria one is t bar ratio and second would be 90 for sangal so here in this case i have passed my study in auc fortunately i got my variability less than 30 so 90 percent of one percent i met 80 to 117 so instead of increasing sample size it will overburden to industries and everything so i changed my design that is the advantage of designing changing so i am not going to much deep into narrow therapeutic class uh, considerations like a regulatory regular difference us fda for example i have case in one one case levothyroxine fda says it is nti whereas uma says it is non nti so in designing the studies you have to cope up with the regulatory accordingly so uh, like 
here you can say that here the generic company one company you have to deal with all the regulators how your formation developing so there would be uh, some challenges there would not be some um, literature not available by the time of designing so uh, for all these challenges you have to cope up with the regulatory uh, like healthy you have to study conducting healthy or patient you have to talk which kind and like if literature is not available much then you have to uh, like <clears throat> uh conflict on these aspects so the best solution for this is control correspondence with the agency to get clarification what are the parameters you have to measure what are the health, whether healthy or patient that you can always seek help of agency they will always ready to uh, encourage uh, through control correspondence so my third and final segment would be alternative and novel approaches and fda science initiatives i would say so like fda is really trying hard to uh, minimize the clinical trials mainly by colon studies because to avoid unnecessarily exposure of human beings so that's the reason there is in when coming to oral solid there is like this is available bcs or class available from long time if you class 1 class 3 drugs are there like those are highly soluble and highly permeable class 1 so bcs waiver approach you can go then in that case you no need to perform uh, any be studies and if you be cis class also 3 also then they have given permission for bio waiver whereas class 2 class 4 if you conduct a bioequivalent study also it is very tough because of huge variability and so that's a uh, thing so uh, i would say that uh, like final alternative approaches uh, i took example uh, mainly not for oral solid this is mainly for topical dosage forms like recently fda you can imagine how much quantum of work uh, will be there in the bioequivalent studies when if it is uh, oral solid it is very simple you have to administer you have to take the blood sample from blood but when coming to topical creams and ointment and gel it is not that much simple because the drug is not uh, going into system of circulation it will available in, in only uh, on your skin so uh, two approaches fd is really encouraging uh, to the science initiative one is the open flow microperfusion still there no guidance is executed on this uh, they are still working on that they have worked on two examples so the uh, methodology is like they have applied test or reference drug on the skin upper face then you have to uh, pour a structure of this actual artificial beaker then you have to insert this probes what you call probes then perfused with the buffer solution from this side and you have to collect the blood samples Uh, what are the excluded from the drug so this is still uh, undergoing this is not approved any drug so we can try with this method okay and second would be uh, pvpk modeling physiologically based pharmaceutical fungo connecting modeling fda really a little bit success on this i would say that because mainly uh, this mainly combining information of biological and physiological component mainly to simulate the in vivo parameters for this a lot of uh, literature will be required and in vitro and in vivo uh, information uh, before going to simulate any uh, data so it is like in silico mathematical model to predict systemic exposure So simply you have to collect the data from in vitro and in vivo uh, it will like any molecule you have to uh, go into pvpk modeling simulations you will need a lot of information on that particularly these are mainly safer faster less expensive i would say that avoid unnecessarily be exposure of human i would say that so in this like mainly uh, three companies are working majorly i would say that gastroplex one is that and simsip from sertara and third one would be pkc from bayer these are the commercial platforms available currently so uh, major milestones i would highlight here like from sertara in 2014 uh, october 2014 they fda first grant to develop this model first of all skin model into the pvpk application then in november 2018 they additionally grant include the skin disease state in in this is a major achievement in 2019 they first fda virtual be approved but uh, no other information is available on this particular model uh, only this information like they got approved for one of the molecule uh, in june 2019 this is one year old but still uh, no further literature is available how the data uh, simulated like how, from where they have collected kind of so it is still uh, execution evaluation under evaluation i would say so uh, this is the way fda is putting lot of efforts in reducing the necessary human research and promoting alternative methods so what i mentioned like either or open flow microperfusion or this pppk just this is my slide and and i thank you and if you have any open questions i am always welcome okay. <laughs> Hello Yes sir 
Yeah, is it audible? Yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah, uh, Satya really is a wonderful talk. It's very, very useful to our especially farm the people and uh, inform people. But this farm, I don't know. They will take this much or not. Right. But I have a few questions uh, regarding your. The first question is uh, clinical trial, uh, especially cost. So for generic, how much and for innovator, how much? Clinical trials. Okay. So uh, innovator, I have mentioned like phase one, phase two, phase. All right, it will take two million kind of one to two million. It is huge. Okay, for generic, I would say okay. that. Uh, sorry. Time, 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 timelines. Timelines for phase one uh, for each phase of the trial, it will take two to three years. It depends on the number of patients. Uh, depend on the uh, uh, how much drug means sometimes some drugs need to be administered only 10 days or 14 days kind of it will be uh, you will get uh, data e very easily but some drugs long term you are administered is three months six months one year kind of it depends on the molecule so typically two to three years for each trial phase one phase two phase three each trial will take two to three years and you say in your slide ethical so what yes. is the meaning of ethical in clinical ethically, ethically I mean, how can we Ethically means uh, uh, always ethics committee will be there because of this declarations of Helsinki earlier, uh, what clinical trials conducted before 1990, it was like without their consent, without uh, like uh, uh, patients consent, they have performed clinical trials, mainly on the prisoners. Okay. Uh, during Nazi trials, because uh, during World War One, World War Two, uh, war prisoners are there uh, without their information directly. They are uh, trial, uh, they like administer their drug, and they have got results from there. Like most of the uh, patient got death during that time. So that's what the reason this declaration of Helsinki. Okay, things. in clinical trial protocol, so you yeah. mentioned randomized sheet. What it is? Randomization sheet. Randomization sheet in the sense, uh, like as I mentioned, uh, either BAB studies or clinical trials, uh, these need to be randomized. It means um, this will be generated either Excel or SAS. Okay, this is automatically generated, means uh, to mainly to avoid biasness. Like, suppose, for example, 50 subjects are there, 25 would be uh, 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 meant for the test, or 24 would be meant for the reference. So, who, 24, uh, who is the 25 for the test? Who is the 25 for re reference will be decided based on the randomization. Mainly to avoid favoritism towards uh, doctors. If so suppose somebody is coming to their uh, known patient, they will definitely will give reference only, not the test. So mainly to avoid that the reason they will randomize. They will randomize, they will give some number for that patient. He has randomized it for a reference. So reference will be given. He's randomized for a test. So test will be given according to the randomization sheet. Okay, you said Etico and Denmark. Yeah. They made series. What's innovator? Innovator already is there. Okay. They are working uh, the, all already are uh, five EPVIR. Already uh, working, uh, already they work on the symptoms of COVID, not exactly COVID-19. Uh, that will work on the symptoms. So already they declare that uh, Remdesivir is working on the symptoms. So you cannot uh, buy the Remdesivir directly. So that's the reason Hetero has developed their generic version on uh, immediate need basis. So it's the way uh, Hetero's Remdesivir work Definitely, innovator will work on that. Is the is the remdesivir uh, patent? Yeah, is the remdesivir yes, patent period is over? Yes, I guess that's after the reason. Period. Yeah, otherwise, uh, after patient patent patent period completed only, then you have to develop generic. But this, I think, this would be the special case. I think uh, agencies will consider. Yeah, yeah, and in. Uh, PK parameters, uh, just uh, CMAX, CMAX, ANC. What about uh, half-life VD clearance? They are not required? They are only secondary parameters. Not everyone, you need not to meet uh, equivalence criteria. Just you need to report. Okay. But definitely, if and any discrepancy is there. Yes. yes. Yeah. Two so questions in chat box. Yeah. So why general medicine is cheap? That's what. For clinical trials, why generic medicine? Yeah, yeah, that's what. For clinical trials, for one molecule, you are screening five thousand drugs. Okay, 
it will take 15 years it will take 100 uh, means i mean 1000 crores 1 million nothing but 1000 crores and it will involve a lot of huge cost huge scientist involves like over the big how big you you can imagine no what is 1000 1 lakh pop 1 lakh employees okay so the generic is you can develop in a short span uh, no need to go with all the phases so you just compare your for develop your formulation you have to compare with the equivalence with the innovator so it is very cheap uh, time is also very less the investment also very less that's for generic is cheap uh there's another question how long will all phases be for fast track covid vaccine how much time it will take uh, vaccine is a different part uh, than this definitely but vaccine uh, will not take that much time it will uh, like uh, take more, means i mean 2 uh, to 3 years uh, it may like we may, we may expect for this pandemic situation so otherwise any vaccination will take a more or less same time like 10 years kind of but uh, considering pandemic they will they are ex- ex- like expanding clinical trials they are re- reviewing the data uh, on immediate basis so that's the reason we can expect 2 to 3 years but people are saying no 15 hours they are going to come so is it correct yes hope <laughs> if if they come up <laughs> with positive results like uh, see uh, they have recruited patients in june for july 1st okay yes so 14 days you have to administer i think 14 days will be the uh, that's the reason we have kept it as a quarantine so 14 days uh, need to check uh, patient uh, data then uh, safety data you have to check after after 14 days then you have to check for the again 14 days you will be required so uh, for trial participants uh, it will take around one month and data review it will take 45 days so that's the reason they assumed that like 45 days would be required from june july 1st to august 14th if results would come positive then definitely it will be a achievement so what is the minimum number is required for vaccine testing what is the minimum or the maximum again depend on the uh, property of the molecule for this i would say like around so for example now covid now covid vaccine in a, imagine so how much subject how much is required i would say like glenmark's this uh, fabi flu they have performed on 150 yeah. patients 150 patients in 11 sites okay. across india the sites were also distributed in vizag nagpur across india so they have performed in 150 okay. patients depend on the uh, uh, innovators uh, cure rate it is depend on the innovator cure rate and placebo rate then sample size will be decided okay otherwise okay. they will perform okay. yes they will perform okay. a small study one or two patients they will get some data so based on that they will decide sample size roughly 100 100 to 150 Okay. In your BAB studies, you mentioned ICF and CSF. So, what is the full name? ICF, informed consent form. This is consent taken from the patients. Okay, okay. consent means okay. Uh, he has read, he knows each and every positive and negative, and he is agreeing to participate in the trial. Okay, and uh, CRF would be case report form. The patient once recruited, that will be filled by uh, clinical research organization persons, either CRA, CRC. They will fill. how much time they have given drug what are the patient condition that is filled by crc not it is in a constant it is filled by crc uh, it's give information of trial participant entire whether he is addicted to trial uh, how much many periods he completed that kind of information you will get it from crf okay one more question from chatbox uh, yeah cs in your submission is necessary for plasma products sorry P S U R, P S U R, right? Yes, uh, asthma yeah. products is not required. Definitely, it will be required for the N D A N D A part. Because what I said, uh, phase four, phase four trials. After phase three, you have to market that drug. Then you have to uh, check what are the adverse events coming up. Okay, that is called periodic safety update report. That is uh, required for the. clinical trials not for the bab studies because bab is already known known drugs they are already safe and effic- effect so no need to go for the psur is biomarkers are used in clinical trials yes biomarkers also so examples can you give some examples no that is a different part not not into like biomarkers uh, in the sense i would say that uh, i i don't know exactly i am answering your question correctly or not suppose heparin is the there 
that is a uh, it will uh, you dena uh, it will like uh, you cannot measure directly heparin into your uh, uh, external administration when you administer externally you cannot measure so it will give uh, it will form anticoagulant 2a anticoagulant 10a kind of this is long back uh, history i am reading so uh, you have to measure uh, those are the biomarkers anticoagulant 2a anticoagulant 10a would be your biomarker in b study rather than heparin okay last question now last question uh no no this one sir part of vision no inspection so then what we show show in inspection without psr uh, i said that that is a concept yeah that is concept in for clinical trials not in the bab studies that i would say that Okay, 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 okay. Great, Satya. Uh, very uh, elaborate discussion, and uh, all uh, questions are answered by you. Really, I'm very thankful to you. I'm really, I'm proud of you because you are my student in Saint Peter's. Really, a lot of knowledge. Thank you very much yes, for your valuable time. Go to Ravi Kumar. Thank you, Satya. Thank you, Sadhana Garu, for the wonderful session with the more knowledge and everything. Definitely will be useful for most of our Form D students as well as B Form students. Uh, especially, and tough, thank you for your valuable time and patient answering to all the questions. Uh, on behalf of uh, University College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, I warmly welcome you all any time. Welcome you to any time to our college and have a guest lecture to our students. Okay, with this we will be ending today's session. So I want to thank, I want to thank uh, our vice chancellor, honourable vice chancellor, Sir Rahul Bujagaru, and our um, honourable rister, Kindi Pawan Kumar Garu, and uh, control of examinations, also in Reddy Garu, and uh, control control of examinations, um, Kumar Swami Garu, and uh, officer on special duty, Malsudan Garu, and our principal. Sri Pravakaradi Garu for their con continuous cooperation and help. Without them, the conduction of this webinar is not actually possible. They are, and I thank all my colleagues and special thanks for Arjun sir and Anjana sir for their technical help. And I thank uh, congratulate all the participants for their uh, patient listening and regular regularly attending these webinars. And I expect this in future. And all the e-certificates will be sent to all the participants. And several questions we are getting from the participants that e-certificates are not being sent on a daily basis. Daily hundred piece certificates only will be sent. And the next day you can try. Next day you will be getting the certificates. With this, we'll close the session. Thank you very much, one and all. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Ravi. Thank, Thank you, Ravi. And, uh... Thank you, Prabhakar sir. Thank you so much for yeah. inviting me. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you. Speaker and audience. Thank you. Thank you.